Thank you for the good special. Appreciate that. The only thing I didn't appreciate is I wasn't invited to sing with them. I like that song. Last time, the last few times they sang it, I didn't ask. I just sang with them. I just, I was like, we're going to sing this song. I jump up there because I like that song. You know, it's a, it's a history of my life, you know, in a song. And I, and I love that. I love that. You know, it's under the blood. You know, that's why we're here this morning. You know, uh, we're, you know, we, we're all uh, equal when we're saved because we're joint heirs with Christ. You know, our equality comes in being in Christ and being joint heirs with Christ. And we, we understand that we can offer that to the world. You know, people want equality today, which is what I'm going to preach on. You want equality, come get under the blood of Jesus Christ, and you can have your equality as being a joint heir with Christ. You know, so I don't want to preach before I preach, but um, let's, let's, turn to our, let's turn in our Holy King James Bible to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 22 for our text this morning. Galatians chapter 3, verse 22 in your Holy King James Bible. Uh, you know, before you get there, uh, I'm going to read Proverbs 28.4. Uh, as you're reading through your Proverbs every day, today's the 28th, so you're reading Proverbs chapter 28. I read it this morning, and, um, you know, I read Proverbs 28, verse 4, and it kind of kind of goes along with our day. Uh, Proverbs 28.4 says, They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Let me read that one more time. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, uh, but such as keep the law contend with them. You know, that's what Christians are doing today. We're contending with wicked people. We're contending with wicked policies. And uh, we're going to be considered wrong by the world. Uh, but as long as we're right by God, uh, we're going to be okay. So Galatians 3.22 says, But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Let me read that one more time. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Let's pray here this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we bow before You. We're just honored at Thy presence. We're blessed by Your presence. We're thankful, Father, for the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names. We're thankful, Lord, that it's been lifted up here in song. And Father, just that it would be lifted up here in preaching and, and in teaching and everything that we do that it would be the name of Jesus Christ that we glorify above all names. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the equality that you've given us in Christ and becoming a joint heir. And we just thank you, Lord, for that. And we can never say thank you enough. We pray, Lord, that others could enter into that blessed condition and position of sonship and daughtership in the kingdom of heaven. We pray, Lord, that you'll use this message for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the message this morning is the Equality Act. The Equality Act. Uh, you know, uh, the Declaration of Independence uh, talks about equality. Uh, the greatest declaration of equality in all the world is found in the Bible. Uh, the second greatest declaration of uh, equality in the world is found in the Declaration of Independence. And when uh, Thomas Jefferson actually took pen in hand to actually handwrite the Declaration of Independence, he wrote some of the most famous words in all of the world. And it says that all men are created equal. And uh, we, we, we believe that. It says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. But, you know, this past week the House passed a bill that is not equal. It is misnamed and it is called the Equality Act or the Equality Bill. And I, I don't call it that. I would call it uh, because I believe in truth and advertising, don't you? You know, I, I like truth and advertising, and, and I wish the fact checkers would actually be fact checkers and say, hey, you know what, they call this thing an equality bill, but it's actually not equality, it's an inequality bill, and it's a bill that is actually a scientific uh, denial bill is what it is, and I believe in the truth and advertising. That's why, you know, I talk to these young people on Wednesday nights, if you don't come on Wednesday nights, you miss a little bit, because we talk about uh, a lot of things, and, you know, one, on one of the slides I had the packages of cigarettes in Australia, and I just like showing those off because, you know, they've got a, a messed up lung. And they've got a guy with throat cancer that doesn't have a throat. And when you go to buy a package of cigarettes in Australia, you have to say, hey, I want that package. Yeah, the one with the guy with his throat missing or the one with the lung that's all decrepit and, and looks like it's just completely gone. Because they believe in a little bit of truth in advertising saying, hey, if you buy these cigarettes, this is what's going to happen to your body. 
And they believe in a little bit of truth there. But, you know, unfortunately, the Democrats in our country and the, the progressives and those who want to do wrong have understand, they understand that so much of the world runs off advertising. And false advertising in our country is so big. It is so big. I mean, when you watch advertising, you see all the wrong things. But, you know, this bill, unfortunately, passed the House 224 to 206 with three Republicans joining the Democrats and voting yes. You know, I wouldn't want to be those, those people who voted for this bill. You know, there's 331 billion people in the U.S., a little over 331 billion. That's a lot of people. Our foundation is we are a republic based upon democracy. In other words, when we vote, we actually vote for what we want and the principles that we want to stand for. We've always been a Christian nation, and de Tocqueville said very eloquently, America is good, and because America is good, America is great. If America ever ceases to be good, she'll cease to be great. Because America was founded on Christian principles. America was founded on the Bible, and as a, as a Bible-believing nation who loves the Bible and who loves God and who loves truth, we vote for those things that we believe in. And we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal based upon the scriptures. Amen? Amen? And we believe that. Are we against the Equality Act because we don't believe the Bible? No, we are against the Equality Act because the Equality Act goes against the biblical principles that we know are true. 331 billion people in the world, when a democracy votes, it's saying we want these principles to grow, govern us and to rule us. And the majority always outvotes the minority because you can't make everybody happy. There's 1.4 million people, adults, who identify as transgender in, in America. And when we allow their voice to be louder than the 331 million, we're doing a disservice to democracy and to the republic. So is the equality bill something that we should be for as Christians? Because are Christians against equality? No. Are we against fair treatment? No. But we understand a republic that is based on democracy cannot make everyone happy. And we don't have the right of happiness. Amen? Amen. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. What is this truth that is self-evident? If you read the Declaration of Independence and you read, uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and you stop right there like, the, like a lot of people want to stop there, you miss a lot of things. You do yourself a great disservice as saying, all men are created equal, we're done. It doesn't stop there. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by who? Their creator. Amen? Praise God. Man, we are, what, a, what a blessing it is to be in this house this morning. To be able to preach to you this morning, to be able to speak to you this morning from the Word of God, understand that we're endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In other words, the Declaration of Independence, the founders of our country were not ignorant men. They understood that we are all created equal, not in equality as in we're all the same age. They didn't mean that, did they? It didn't mean we're all the same gender. Didn't mean that. It didn't mean we're all as handsome as I am, did it? No. No, some of you aren't blessed with that. And we're not equal. Our founding fathers knew that our equality was not based on our physical attributes. Whether male or female. Whether bald or with hair. Whether thin or whether thick. We're not equal in those things. Whether 45 or 85. We're not equal in these things. We cannot be equal in these things. So our founding fathers were not saying that all men are created equal in physical attributes. Amen? Amen? What were they saying? They were saying well, all men are created equal. They're endowed by their creators. We're certain unalienable rights. And they went ahead and qualified. What are we equal in? I want to go through that a little bit this morning because unfortunately America has lost its focus on what is real. Amen. When we talk about equality, it says that we're our rights, our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Three things that they qualify. So the quality of all people to enjoy is what? The quality of life. Amen? We're all equal that we all deserve life. It shoots down this bill already. Because this bill in it has abortion in it. 
the quality of life, we all should be equal in having the ability to be born. Genesis 2, 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The equality the founders penned in the founding documents that all men have the right to life. They have the equality to be born. We put human beings on the same platform in that their, their, their soul is equal in God's eyes. Amen? We all have a soul, and all souls are equal, the Bible says. Number two, we have the equality of liberty. 1 Corinthians 10, 29 says, Conscience, I say not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? That's really what liberty is, right? Free will. The ability to say, I'm going to do this today. I want to, I want to think this today. Nobody can come in and steal your free will. You have the right to be born. You have the right to have a soul. You have the right to free will, meaning I can, I can think what I want to think, and nobody can come into my mind and meddle with what I'm thinking. I have the right to, to, to think what I want, right? It's yeah. so what God gives us, the right to life, to liberty, which is free will. Every person has free will. I don't care if you're born black or brown, yellow, whatever color you are. Rich, poor, you all have free will. You all have a soul. So what puts, what's what, put, what, what, put, what puts human beings on the same platform? It isn't their physical attributes. It has a soul. It's their free will. And number three is their pursuit of happiness. Amen? That's what, that's what the founding fathers were so wise. They say, listen, we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And all these three, we are on equal playing field. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're long-haired, whether you're short-haired, it doesn't matter about all of that. You have these three things that make you on a common playing field with all people, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And your pursuit of happiness ends at a certain spot. Because you have the right to pursue happiness. I'm all for you pursuing happiness. That's fine. You can pursue happiness all you want. But I want to tell you something. There are people today who want to pretend they're a man, and they want to pretend they're a woman, they want to go into the women's locker room for their happiness. And when their happiness meets that parent's yes. unhappiness, right. when a parent has a young daughter showering, and a young man wants to go in there and pretend he's a woman for his happiness, and that parent decides his happiness depends on his daughter showering safely by herself, somebody's happiness is going to end in, in, in a bad meeting. Amen? Amen. You don't have the right to happiness. You have the right to look for happiness. Amen. People try to find happiness without God. That's the problem. Amen. You know, I mean, I, I, I can tell you this firsthand. When I was born, I was looking for happiness. And I went out looking for happiness. And happiness is so hard to find in selfishness. In fact, it cannot be found in selfishness. I mean, people try to find happiness without God and without the Bible, and I suppose that is why the, world, the word happiness is not found in your King James Bible, because people look for it without God. However, if you, if you, if you look for happiness, we, we sang a song this morning, how beautiful heaven must be, home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary, how beautiful heaven must be. You know, happiness is found in God. Happiness is found in, you know, a clean conscience. So many people today are so miserable today, even though we have all of the world's treasures here in America, they live a life of misery because they're selfish and they're pulling things in and they're pulling things in and they're trying to accumulate happiness without God and they're going out looking for happiness without God and they think, if I can get this, I'll be happy. If I can have this, I can be happy. If I, if I accomplish this task, I can be happy. And they do it without God, underst not understanding that happiness is found in God. It is found in the Bible. It is found by living a righteous, holy life. So now we understand that equality is not found in physical qualities. Equality of soul, equality of free will, equality of pursuing happiness. These are the things that the founding fathers were talking about when they talked about equality. Everybody on the same playing field. 
So what, what is the equality bill? Or the equality act, or the science denial bill as I would call it? You know, fact checkers should have, they should have, they should have fact checked this name a long time ago. Uh, you know, evil has been branded as good and, and, and it's not. Uh, you know, you look at commercials. I mean, look at commercials for alcohol. Aren't they all having fun? You know, I, I watch, you know, I watch, I, I, once in a while I'll see one, I don't watch them on purpose, but I'll see and, you know, they'll have, they'll have horses and ponies running around and, you know, people drinking and having fun and partying and, you know, the advertisement for alcohol is it's all good and, you know, it's going to make you happy. And who would oppose that? Only someone, who would oppose uh, that? that? If you looked at that ad, you'd be like, who would, who would be against this? Only someone who obviously is a stick in the mud who doesn't like happiness. Right? I mean, who, who would oppose a bill that's called the Equality Act? Obviously only bigots. Right? Right? No, no, the people who would oppose it are the people who can see past the flutter and the wrapping of something that is wrong, that is wrapped up as something that is nice, but we understand what is on the inside and we say, you know, you may, you may portray alcohol as some wonderful thing where people go and they come together and they drink and they get drunk and everything's wonderful and they're, they're happy, but we see the end result of alcohol. We see broken homes. We see child abuse. We see the things that cause uh, women to be hurt in their own home. We see the tearing apart of a relationship because of alcohol. We see all of the wrapping undone. Amen. And we're, we're not against happiness, but we just know where happiness comes from. And we're not bigots when we say we don't like the Equality Act. We like the Equality Act. We just want a real Equality Act. It's called the Declaration of Independence, and we want to stick with it. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, we're against this bill because it favors one group over another group. And it tilts the playing field toward the minority over the majority in a republic that is run on democracy. And we would rather make a, we'd rather make a few billion people angry and make a few thousand people happy. Happy. Amen? It's wrong. I mean, it universalizes abortion, the killing of babies. That isn't very equal. Amen? Let me tell you, there's nothing equal about this bill because it is trying to make the physical world equal, and you cannot do that. You can never do it, and it will never be. I was born into a loving family. You know, praise God, I was born into a loving family. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I wish everyone was born in the same family I was. We're not because we're not equal. But I was born into a family with a mother and father who loved God and who loved the Bible and who taught me right and wrong. And I was born into a loving family. But you know what? I had an older brother. And we could have tried, we could have tried the equality thing. I tried it all the time. D Dad and mom would say, he can go do this because he was a year older than me. And I couldn't do it. And I'd be like, that's not fair. It's not right. And we could have pretended that I was the same age he was. But it wouldn't have worked because we would have been denying science scientific proof that he was born before me. He had a birth certificate that said he was born a year before me. I was born into a home with a, a younger sister. Now, we could have pretended that she was one of the boys, but we would have been denying science. Scientific proof that she was a girl and we were boys. There were some things she could do that we couldn't do. There's some things we could do that she couldn't do. If we would have made everything equal, what would we have done? We had to be the same age, right? We would have had the same looks. We would have had to have the same hair color. We had been born the same day. We were born in this. What I'm trying to say is we were born in the same household with the same loving parents and we were not equal. And we were never going to be equal. And we could never even be treated as completely equal. And they loved us all the same. Right. Amen. But we were not equal. For things to be equal, you, know, you, you can take this insanity any, as long as as far as you want to go. If we wanted that home to be equal, what, what do we need to do? We need to pretend our parents were the same age we were. That gets silly. We'd have to deny scientific proof that my parents were my parents because we want everything to be equal in this household. Right? What if I went to my parents and said, hey, you know what? I'm kind of tired of the things that are running around here. We're going to make an equality bill for our house. And we're all going to be equal. Every one of us are going to be equal. We're going to all be treated the exact same way. You're not our parents anymore. You're our siblings. You look the same as we look. You dress the same as we dress. You act the same as we act. We're all the same age. We all have the same hair color. We all have the same features. It doesn't work that way. And what a boring world that would be. 
Right? God isn't God didn't create God didn't create equality in human features for a reason. He created you special. Amen. He gave you something more special than physical features. He said all men are created equal and they all have a soul. Amen. They all have a free will and they all have the right to pursue happiness. That's your equality. You should love that equality. Amen. Stop trying this madness of trying to make everybody the same. You can't do it. I saw a picture the other day. I mean, my mind is blown with this, this, this world that we live in of 2020 and 2021 where we have this, 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 this madness. And there was a room full of people and all of them had platform shoes so they were all the same height. So they could all be equal in this room. They weren't equal. They were only equal in height. But they weren't even equal in height because some of them had boxes stacked up to the ceiling. And one man sitting over there by himself against the wall and he's as tall as he is. But nobody really wanted to associate with him in this picture because he was naturally tall. Stupid. I can't, say it any, I can't say it any plainer than that. Stupid. But that's what happens when you get away from the Bible. You become stupid. And stupid is as stupid does, yes. I had to say that. It gets really stupid really quickly. When you deny science, that's what happens. When you deny science, which is, the Bible calls science falsely so called, you know, the Bible says there are, there's a science that's going to be coming out that is going to be a repackaged science, and they're going to be, it's going to be science falsely so-called, and they're going to package all kinds of things in there like evolution and transgenderism and all kinds of different things they're going to package in there, and it's going to be science falsely so-called. In other words, it goes against all real science which is uh, observable, repeatable, and we just make it whatever we want it to be. Amen? Amen. So what does this bill do? as I run through this really quickly. Who loses in this bill? I want to tell you something. Who loses in this bill? Women lose. Churches lose. Children lose. Hospitals lose. Private foundation loses. America loses. That's who loses in this bill. Amen? In the workplace, I'll tell you, Senator James Langford said, if I go to interview for a job and I'm not hired, I can sue that employer because I perceive that they are thinking I was gay and so they didn't hire me. I don't have to prove anything. It is based simply on my perception and my belief. You don't think that's going to cause some trouble with people trying to hire people at work? Our children, a boy can say he feels like a girl and wants to shower in the girl's restroom. And as I understand with this bill, he cannot be denied. I mean, it's happening already because we're experimenting this. With, that's, the glory, that's the wonderful thing of the United States. The United States said, listen, every state is independent, and states can do all these stupid things they want, and we'll, they're called trial states because they'll run out a bill or a law, and they'll put it in a place, and you'll start seeing it, it, it flounder. And so other states don't get infected by that. But when the federal government comes in and says, we're all going to do it one way, that's wrong. Amen? Amen? It's already happening. Pasha Thomas was forced to remove her child from school after a male classmate assaulted her five-year-old daughter in the girls' restroom. The boy had access to the girls' restroom because the school's policy granted students access to private facilities on the basis of self-identifying gender identity. Administrators refused to change the policy despite Thomas's complaint. Federal authorities are now investigating the incident. That's messed up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, so a boy says, you know, so a boy says, I want to go in the girls. He, he can't be denied. A boy, a boy in many states right now can say, I'm a girl, and he can go run in the girls' race like I've talked about before and beat all the girls and win a medal and destroy all those records. Thus ending, thus ending uh, girl sports. The Equality Act would put parental rights to make decisions about their child's medical treatment at education and education at risk. In fact, parents in Ohio lost custody of their 17-year-old daughter. Why did they lose custody of their 17-year-old daughter? Listen to this. They lost custody of their 17-year-old daughter because their daughter wanted to become a man and they refused to give her the steroids to become more masculine. So they lost her. They lost her taken out of her home, lost custody of her. It's madness. It's crazy. Amen. The medical field. You know, the medical field is going to hurt it's going to hurt the medical field. We have we have a religious hospital in our area who will be forced to do things that they against their conscience do not want to do. 
They do not want to do these things. And if, they, if this bill goes through, I, I encourage you all to call your congressmen, uh, your, your, your senators, because if this bill would go through for some reason, and, and it may not, but it doesn't matter, they keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and they're pushing it in schools, which is what we watched the video on today, because if they can get the kids' minds to believe this junk, eventually they'll get it through. So I'm, I'm preemptively preaching about it. I'm prepping for this. And I want you to prepare for this by doing what you need to do. But, I mean, if a patient, listen, if a patient came into a, the hospital and said, Abraham Lincoln is trapped in my body. He's trapped in my body. You know what we would do? We'd say, okay. We'd get a little white coat, we'd put it on him, and we'd take him for a mental evaluation. We would not help him grow a beard. Because we would not want to promote that idea in his head that he is Abraham Lincoln trapped, tra you know, Abraham Lincoln was trapped in his body. We should just help him grow the beard, get the hat, get all the whole outfit and just put him out there in the world. No, we wouldn't do that because we're we haven't gone insane yet. Yet a man can come into a hospital and say, I have a woman's body trapped in my body. And we go, oh, let's make him a woman. It's crazy. Amen. That's what happens when you get away from the Bible. When you, when you leave wisdom in the past and you say, we don't need that anymore. Church is not relevant today. The Bible isn't relevant today. It's more relevant today than it's ever been. Amen? Amen? Amen. It, the church is more relevant today than we've ever been, and we need to stop trying to get down to the world's level and continue to try to reach God's level and understand what God wants us to understand and tell the world no. We're not going that direction. We're not bringing that into this church. We're not bringing the psychedelic lights and the smoke screen and all the fancy music that say, sings these songs that don't have anything to do with God. You know, I love the music that was here this morning. Man, we were singing about the blood of Jesus Christ. We were singing that happiness is found in God and in heaven and that we can be happy through holiness, not through our carnal living. Amen? I mean, when you look at the world, you just want to vomit because of all this stuff that you see and everybody else can't see because they don't read the Bible. That's why we're trying to get everybody to read through the Bible this year. And all of our people are reading through the Bible. If we can get another neighbor, a coworker, someone else to read through the Bible, all of a sudden the scales will drop from their eyes and they'll be able to see the stupid and inhumane things that we're doing to one another. Amen. Amen. Churches and charities are going to hurt under this law. A church that has employees must hire without qualifying if the person is living biblically or unbiblically. That, th this bill is made to actually, not to make people equal, but to destroy those who do not agree with the world. It's made to crush the competition. It's made to crush, well not competition, it's just made to crush people who don't conform. That's why the churches sh should all be saying something against this bill, against this act. There's nothing equal about it. And if we don't say something, I want to tell you something, you won't have a church building anymore which may be a blessing in disguise, but we don't really want to go down that road. We don't have to guess what will happen. There are states that are already doing it. In Anchorage, Alaska, a biological male twice tried to gain access to the city's faith-based downtown Hope Center. It was a shelter for homeless, trafficked, abused girls. And here's a man who wanted to identify as a woman. He tried to get in there twice, and then he sued the city, and they ended up letting him in and telling him he can go into this abused housing for these women. They forced them to allow a biological male who identified as a woman to sleep and change clothes alongside with women, most of whom were victims of rape and sex trafficking. That's wrong. Amen? Amen? That is wrong. That's on the state level, but, but this, this bill right here, a federal sexual orientation and gender identity law could force any charity to open up private facilities, including sex-specific bathrooms, showers, and sleeping areas to members of the opposite sex. I mean, listen... Listen, think, thinking in my carnal mind, okay, thinking very unspiritually, why would a man ever go to prison, to a man's prison, if this bill gets passed? Right? I'm going to jail. I'm, going to, you know, I'm not going to jail, praise God. But if I was going to jail and I was a heathen, I would never go as a man. It will destroy women's prisons. Think about that. We care about prisoners too, church. I care about, I care, that's wrong. Well, the reason we segregate the men from the women in prison is the same reason they should be segregated in all of society for reasons that are important. 
Right? Yeah. Modesty is important. And to bring a, a man into a shelter where women are abused and have been raped and bring him in and put him in there to sleep and to shower with them is wrong. Amen. Just totally wrong. And you know what it is? It's, it's, it's abuse of women. In a society that says they love women, and we have women's equality acts, and we gave the women, we're, we're just destroying all of that. That's what, you're, that's what they're destroying with this equality act. They're destroying women. This bill is targeting women and targeting churches. Amen? I mean, the Equality Act oppresses women. That's what it is. It's a, it's a, it, that's what it should be called. The Women's Oppression Bill is what it should be called. Right? Truth in advertising. No more women's sports. No more women's shelters. Uh, women, you're going to lose your scholarship. You won't get a scholarship. How are you going to compete? You're not going to do it. I want to tell you something. Listen, and you think, well, and a lot of people out there, they're thinking out there, especially in Cyberland, not in here because all of you are, are wise who read your Bible. But I want to tell you something. You can have a man who's the same height, the same weight as a woman. And in sports, they do not compete equally. It's a fact. That's a scientific fact. Amen. So you think you're going to go, to go to college on a scholarship, young lady, and compete with men, even if they're the same size and same weight? It will not happen. You will lose. This is the Women's Oppression Act. And here's what you can do about it. Because I don't like to, I don't like to give these things out here and then not give a solution. There's a solution to this. We need to pray. And we need to contact our senator and make our voice heard. Listen, I, I, I want to tell you something. There, there's there's 30, 331 billion people in the U.S. 1.4 identify as transgender. I want to tell you something. The mass majority of people in our country, I believe, still are opposed to something like this. I don't believe they're going to continue to oppose something like this as is taught in school. Because we have to get in the schools, too. We need, some, we need some people to run for the school board. We need some people who care enough about our kids who will run for the school board and get elected in the school board and start helping to, to, to understand what our kids are being taught. We need some people to take action. Our churches have been so bad about getting into church and having a Sunday morning service, and then nothing happens beyond the Sunday morning service. We've all been bad about that. We've all been guilty about that. And that's why our nation is sliding down the slippery slope into hell because we have all been bystanders. We've got our Sunday morning ticket. We go sit on our pew and we got our Sunday morning ticket. We punch the ticket. We go home and nothing happens. And we all have to take responsibility, look in the mirror and say, hey, what can I do? What can I do? Can I go knock on a door this Friday? Can I pray for those who go knock on a door this Friday? Because the only hope America has is the blood of Jesus Christ. The only true equality we have in this world is found in God's word. Now, I'm going to get away from all of this, this wicked bill. And I want to get into the Bible. Because the Bible is where the truth is found. You know, the Bible gives us, what does the Bible say about equality? It has a lot to say about it. You read, you read, read Proverbs, which you're all reading through right now. Equity is found all over Proverbs. Amen? Amen? The, Bible, the Bible is clear. God sees all mankind as equal. Not as physical equals. He understands you're not all the high, same height. You're not all the same weight. You're not all the same age. Every soul and each individual soul has free will and the ability to pursue happiness. He understood, you know, that's where the founding fathers got this. Adam and Eve pursued, you know, Adam and Eve pursued happiness in a perfect place. They did. Adam and Eve pursued, they pursued happiness in a perfect place. Think about that. Part of the lie the devil came to Eve with was, you can be equal with God. You can become as God. Right? And she took the lie. She took the bait. She took the bite. And all of a sudden, equality was erased. She got pushed out into a mean, cruel world, and everything fell apart. And she started searching for happiness. She left happiness to find happiness only to understand that only happiness can come through the blood that is coming in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I like that. Wherefore is by one man sinned into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But the scripture has concluded all under sin. You know what your equality comes from in this world? Huh? You know what, how equal you are in this world? You're all condemned under sin. Amen? We are all grouped together in equality in sin. 
And I want to tell you something. I'm going to read a lengthy portion of Scripture right now, and I know we're going a little over, but that's okay. Amen? I mean, it's important to go over this. I want to tell you something. We live in the greatest country on the face of the planet, a country that's been blessed by God over and over and over and over. We've had revivals. We've had great preachers. We've had more access to the Holy King James Bible than any other nation in history. Why does a nation fall? Israel had all of those things, yet Israel was divided into two countries and finally destroyed. Separated all over. As you would call, what would you, what would you say? Israel was spewed out of the land. You know what spewed means? It means to spit. Man, if I spit right now, I'd hit every one of you. We won't do that because of COVID, right? We'll blame everything on COVID. I wouldn't spit on you anyway. I want to read something. It's Leviticus, if you want to turn there, 18. There we go. Leviticus 18, verses 20 through 28. I read this, you know, we're reading through the Bible, and I read this this week. As we read through the Bible together, Leviticus 18, verse 20 through 28. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is, an abom it is, it is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto, it is confusion. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these things, for in all these for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. And ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of you your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. You know what the Bible's saying there, the Holy King James Bible? You know what the Holy King James Bible's saying in those verses, in the verses preceding that? It's saying, sexual immorality is the reason I vomited the nations that dwelt in the land that you dwell in before you came. I spewed them out. And as you follow those nations that I kicked out to bring you in, I will end up kicking you out of your own country. Don't think it won't happen to you, America. Amen. I mean, don't think it won't happen to you. Because as Israel went, so does America go when it doesn't follow God. I mean, we, we voted for a man who wants his... Listen, this bill is one of Joe Biden's top legislative priorities he wants passed in the first hundred days of office. Senator Chuck Schumer, he said he would use this power as majority leader to put the bill on the floor and would dare Republicans to vote against it. I dare him to vote for it. I dare anyone, and, I, and I, I, I feel sorry for the ones who already did vote for it, but I dare anyone to vote for it, because when you vote for that, you're voting against God. And when you vote against God, you will not win. Amen. Amen? Let God be true and every man a liar. Listen, you will someday stand before God in judgment and answer to how you vote on every bill that ever comes to the Senate or to the House, and you'll stand before God and give account. You should stand before America and give account, because America is a, is a republic based on democracy, and the people would love to spew this out. Amen. But if you force it down our throats, I dare you to vote for it, because God will bring you to judgment. But we're all guilty under sin. Wherefore is by one man sin entered to the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin. So the promise of equality and humanity 
did not produce the desired effect. When Eve left the garden in search of happiness, she found a world that was very unequal physically. She found a world where she was a woman and her husband was a man. She found a world where her children were in subjection to her and she was in subjection to her husband. And Adam found a world where he was subjected to God. He had to answer to God for everything that he did. He found a world where there were thorns growing out of the ground. He found a world where things didn't go well, where sickness and death and everything came into being. It was a world of inequality, but we were all equal under sin. We're all equally guilty. Amen. You're guilty, I'm guilty. Adam and Eve were guilty. In the pursuit of happiness, it only brought misery. And it brought me equality. Because I'm, I'm with every other fallen creature, guilty in sin. I found equality in sin. The Bible says in Proverbs 8.36, But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. This puts us all on an equal playing field, doesn't it? Right? I mean, you want an equal playing field? You want the Equality Act? The Equality Act happened when Adam and Eve left the garden. And we all became equal on one footing and condemned under sin. The Bible says in Ezekiel 18, 4, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know, when I finally got equality and understood what equality meant, I wanted to escape it. <laughs> right? When I finally understood what it meant for me to have my free will and take free will as far as I wanted to take it and dive into selfishness, and jump into the treasures of this world, and my eyes were open to the sin that was in me, and the devastation, and the evil, and deceitful heart that was inside of me, I wanted to escape the equality that I found myself in, and the equal footing under condemned under sin with every other creature in mankind. Right? Amen. Amen. I found I don't want to be equal on this earth. I don't want to be equal on this earth. I don't want to be equal or guilty, but I am. What do I do? For all of a sudden, come short of the glory. You know, in, in the Garden of Eden, the temptation was basically to be a joint heir of perfection. And Adam and Eve left perfection in pursuit of happiness. They had to lose what they didn't appreciate in order to appreciate what they would later receive. Amen. I'm so glad God offers an escape from the equality of sin. Amen? Amen? I'm so glad God offers an escape from the equality of sin and offers everyone a possibility to be the joint heir of Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen? Amen. Amen. For as by Romans 8, 14 through 17, if you're following along, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, so, so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Galatians 3, 27 and 28. For as, my, for, for as many of you, for as many of you as has, have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You know, praise God for the equality that we find in Christ Jesus. Amen. Right? I mean, if you really want true equality, it's found in the Bible. First of all, it's found in the Bible as we're all condemned under sin. Secondly, it's found in the Bible that we can escape the equality of the condemnation of sin by being joint heirs with Christ and being grafted in to the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. Amen. I mean, if, if you haven't been saved this morning, everybody probably here has been. But if you haven't, you're equal with everyone else in this world. And that equality gets us right to hell. Amen. That's where equality, that's where our equality is going to lead us. But by the grace of God... We can be a joint heir with Jesus Christ because God reached down his hand to us to pull us out of our equality. Amen? Amen? Out of our equality into his equality. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen? Jesus did not count it robbery to be equal with God. 
Think about that for a moment. Jesus did not count it robbery to be equal with God because he is God in the flesh. And he saw our equality and where our equality led us was going to be to hell. And God says, I'm going to give them a lifeline out of the miserable equality they are in. And I'm going to give them a lifeline to heaven. And he reaches down and picks us up. Listen, you don't come to God as a good person. You come to God in the equality of sin condemned to hell. And God is the one reaching down to us saying, I come to make you a joint heir in Christ Jesus and fit for the kingdom of heaven, which we cannot do on of our own. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. If you're lost this morning, the Bible gives you equality under sin. That's what this verse says, clearly. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. You are under equal playing field in sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Here's the gospel in a nutshell. Amen? Amen? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We can be saved, repent, and believe the gospel. It's all it takes. Amen. Reach up for the hand that's reaching down for you and escape the equality of sin. And you can do that today. I'm going to read the poem that's back there by Sister Edda. I love her poems. I wish she'd read them because she reads them better than I do. But her poem is a path, and we'll close on this. There is a path from earth to God. One which everyone must trod. It is there we will hear him say, Enter in or go away. It is there we will pay the price for the way we have chosen to live our life. I know in his eyes we are going to seek the answer that will belong only to the meek. If we are bold in this life and turn him away, there is only one thing we can hear him say, Depart from me, you may not enter in. You didn't choose me, you chose to live in sin. And you know what a horrible thing. To choose the wrong path. To reject the hand of God reaching down to you. There'll be people in hell who sit on church pews, who watched a church service, who heard the call of God, who understood their equality in sin, who understood the condemnation of sin, that we're all guilty and we're all on the road to hell, and they reject the call of God, offering them salvation. It is a free gift, the most expensive gift ever given. And he reached his hand down and says, will you take a hold? And so many people, like this poem says, will reject that gift and hear him say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Don't be one of those people. Don't sit on a church pew and go to hell and have a million years to think about this sermon. Amen? Amen? Over and over and over, the chances of salvation will play in your mind for all of eternity. If you're lost this morning, you need to come and be saved. The devil will tell you, you don't have time. You got other things to do. The devil will glue you to your seat. The devil will tell you, you don't need to be saved today. That's not the voice of God. That's not the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's the devil. And that's your own guilty conscience that wants to continue to wallow in the mire. When God calls, you need to respond. You don't have to walk this aisle, but it's a good place to, it's a good place to start. Because if you'll take that step of faith, I, I, I've seen so many people take one step of faith, and guess what? What it led to? Another step of faith. I've seen a lot of people hold on to a pew. I've done it myself and not take a step. And you know what that led to? Holding on to a pew and holding back on God and rejecting the call of the Holy Spirit. You take one step of faith, I guarantee you something. God will give you the strength to take another one and another one and another one. And the next thing you know, you'll be on your knees crying out to God. And that is when God can move in your life. Let's pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you, Lord, for your people. We thank you, Lord, for you reaching down to us in our equality and pulling us out of the equality that we were in because it was misery. We thank you, Lord, that 
as we chased happiness and didn't find it, we finally look back to the one who gave the soul to us and that our happiness is found in, in you and in holiness. Father, we pray, Lord, that if there's anybody here today that's lost or anybody watching or that will watch, Father, that they'll take that step of faith and that they'll cry out to you for salvation. The Bible says it's so simple to be saved, so, so simple that even a child can understand to repent, which just means to turn to you and believe the gospel. Help no one here to go to hell. Help no one here to pass up the chance to be pulled out of the equality that they're in under sin and to be saved. In Jesus' name, we pray that you'll bless the invitation and, and move in the Holy Spirit. And Lord, that you get all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Ask for a song of invitation this morning.